So I just came across this story right here that is coming out of Nashville, Tennessee, where you have the model minority. At this point, they might as well embrace that title, especially since they have a bill that's protecting them, like really protecting them, whose name is Me Wan Kim, 30 years of age. He's the manager of a laundromat, and he pulled a rifle out on a family that also included a child. I would not be surprised if it was a black family that he did this to. Now, if this is a black family that he did this to, just rewind back to last week when we first learned about that Ryan Lee Wynn who pulled out a sledgehammer first chasing after some kids and then went and got his gun and shot through his window and shot a little black boy in the arm and um, could have killed him. And now fast forward to this. Are y'all seeing and noticing a pattern? Ever since they got this bill, they've now become emboldened and people on Twitter have been saying that they're trying to find an Asian version of George Zimmerman. And almost had one with Ryan Lee Wynn had that little boy died. Thankfully, he didn't. So now you have this guy in Nashville who owns this lawn. Well, he's the manager and he pulled out a rifle on the family. Now, I wonder what excuse he used as to why he pulled out his gun. So let's get into it. And this story is coming from Fox 17, WZTV Nashville. A man is behind bars after Metro Police say he pulled a gun on a family, including a young child at a laundromat in Nashville. Me, Juan Kim, the manager of the, fa of the facility, is charged with three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon with the intention to kill. Officers said it happened Sunday at the business located on 304th East Thompson, E. Thompson Lane. According to an affidavit, a couple was patronizing the business and left for a short while while their clothes were washing. The report says they returned to find their clothes in a basket and an argument broke out over the clothes being taken out of the washer. Kim reportedly told police that the couple started pushing him and went back to the went to the back room and grabbed a rifle because he was in fear. The fact that he's in jail right now and he pulled out that rifle on that family, including that child, lets me know his portion of the story that he told was nothing but a bunch of bullshit. Because if so, they would have backed him up on that. But see, he says that they push him. See, he was lean. What? I called this. I Sometimes I hate when I'm right, but I'm glad when I'm right at the same time. Didn't I tell y'all? Back when this bill was drafted up, that they were going to bastardize this, bastardize this bill and they were going to overextend it. And by they, I'm talking about the people who it benefits. This guy is putting it out there as if he was being attacked and he had to defend himself. But his story doesn't add up because there's cameras. If you can look, well, you can't see it. But behind this picture is an actual surveillance footage of or a surveillance snapshot of inside the laundromat that pretty much would debunk his story and uh as far as him having to defend himself like this guy took their clothes out of the washer and put it in a basket he probably did it with the intent to and y'all gotta forgive the chimes that are coming through on my phone notifications is going like crazy but basically um he probably did that to get a rise out of that family so he could have a reason to go and get his gun. But anyway, let me get back to this uh, story. Kim reportedly told the couple that he, oh, I read that part. The couple told police Kim came back and started pointing the rifle at their family, including an eight-year-old girl, and told them he would kill them. The family ran out of the business to wait for police. Officers say Kim admitted to getting the rifle and threatening the family. The affidavit also notes that the family believed the rifle to be real when Kim allegedly pointed it at them. And Kim is being held on a $15,000 bond. The fact that he has these charges against him and he's still in jail as far as we know, lets you know that, like I said before, his story did not add up. Now, they didn't say the ethnic background of the family, but I'm just saying I would not be surprised if this was a black family that he did this to. Not saying that it is or if it isn't, but considering what has been going on lately, I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if it was. But. Yeah, like I said, they got an emboldened behind this anti-Asian hate crime bill that they have. See, it's a double edged sword for them. One on one hand, they can cry or claim that someone is uh, displaying a hate crime against them 
when no one really isn't like what it seems to me like he was trying to do. On the other hand, they can turn their sh- their sword on the people that they want to and possibly get away with it. And if the person who they turned their sword on defends themselves against said attack, then that person will be held in the wrong. Thus, giving this person still an upper hand, even if they say die from their said injuries. See, it's like they got that thing all worked out, but I told y'all a couple months ago. Hold on, y'all. I told y'all a couple months ago that they would be doing that. They would bastardize the hell out of this bill. And that's exactly what's going on right now. Expect more of this to happen. And when they keep doing you know what, this is this is the point right here when we need to, like, hit at the people who drafted this bill even harder and say, look, y'all are abusing the hell out of this bill. We know what you're trying to do, and it's not going to work. But, yeah, expect more of this to happen. It's going to continue to happen. Like, it's only June. We still got the rest of the year to go, so I'm curious to see what else is going to happen. Like I said, this bill gives them protection and it emboldens them at the same time. 